What's going on guys, Eric here and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how to transform this canvas into a Mandalorian theme reverse canvas using heat transfer vinyl. So in this video, I'll walk you through all the process steps to make this project, starting with the design, the weeding and cutting, the preparation of the canvas and the frame to include staining, the application of the canvas itself, and finally finishing the project by putting the canvas back onto the frame. At the end of the video, we'll talk a little bit about how long this project takes to do and about how much it might cost you to do uh, if you wanted to do this for yourself or make it as a gift for others. So in Silhouette Studio, if you already have a design made, go ahead and open your folders and go find your design. Uh, I already have one made and I'm going to open it right here. And so you can see this is the design that I'm going to be using for this project. Um, if you want to know how I made this design, I do have a separate tutorial on this one and I'll put the link in the description uh, if you want to know how I made this particular design. Anyway, so this one I know I need it to fit in about a 9x9 nine nine square and that's kind of the, the, fray, the edges of it. And so what I want to do is make sure that it's a little bit smaller than the 9x9. Nine nine. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and click it so that this box forms around. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock the aspect ratio. And then I've already sized it ahead of time, but I, I only want this thing to be about uh, eight um, and a quarter inches high at the t at its biggest point. And so you can see by do locking that, changing one of these uh, ratios affects the, the uh, ratio. So I changed the height, and so it proportion because I locked the uh, ratios, it proportionally changed the width of the design itself. And so here you can see here are the bars that tell you the height and width. Uh, the maximum height and width of the graphic itself. All right, so now that once you've got it sized up, what I like to do ahead of time is I will go ahead and make sure you click the object so it's selected, and I will go ahead and mirror it horizontally. And the reason being is because we're going to be going to cut it as um, uh, inverse because we're doing a heat transfer vinyl, and so you want it to be um, cut it backwards so that when you press it, uh, you're going to press it and it'll end up with the graphic uh, the correct way. And so to do this, all you had to do again was object mirror and then flip it horizontally. So once you've got that flipped horizontally, uh, I like to just kind of put it up in the top left corner ish here. You can set up your grid lines if you want to. Um, and then you'll, once you've got that all set up and ready to go, you'll want to make sure that you get your cutting mat loaded. If you're going to use a cutting mat, get your cutting mat loaded with your HTV. And then once you're ready to go there, you can go ahead and hit send. All right, and so there's a couple things here. I'm going to be using Sizer's um, Easy Weed HTV, and I know already ahead of time just from testing it that the basic settings on the top right here for heat transfer smooth, the one that's already built in, is going to uh, work perfectly fine. And that has a depth of two with a force of four and a speed of eight. I just do a single pass. Um, what I like to do to make sure that this is going to cut properly is I will basically draw a select box over it, highlight it, and then select this cut function right here in the middle. Um, and that ensures that um, this object is going to be cut. And you can see the, what, what will be cut will be these red line areas here. Uh, tool one is my auto blade. I'm just going to go ahead and use the auto blade. Um, and again, just a regular cut. So once I've got all my settings ready for cutting, you know, I've, I've got heat transfer, I've got the cut function, not the um, not the drawing function. I've got my auto blade set because that's what I'm going to be using. All these are good. If you're using a different vinyl, make sure you adjust the settings. Then I, I have my Cameo on and ready. And so you can see down here at the bottom, it says ready. I'm using a Bluetooth uh, versus a wired, so I want to make sure that is ready to go. If you do need to test it, you can use this test function here. It'll cut that little uh, function triangle out. Um, but once you're ready to go and you've got this all set up for cutting, uh, if you hit send, what it'll do is ask you if you want to send it mirrored or send it as is. If you didn't flip the graphic already, go ahead and hit send mirrored. Now, I will warn you that even though if you hit send mirrored, if you have it on the left side, for example, and you only put enough vinyl to cover this area here, remember it's going to mirror it, so it's going to drop it and cut on the right side. Um, if you send as is, which we can do because we went ahead and pre-flipped or already flipped the graphic itself, you can send as is and it'll cut exactly 
as it is on the left side in this type of shape and form. All right, and so once you uh, have that all squared away, go ahead and hit send and let your machine do its thing. All right, so my uh, Cameo 3 has finished cutting and I've um, gone ahead and taken it off the machine. And now it's time to weed out the excess vinyl to reveal the graphic. I like to use an X-Acto knife uh, as my uh, weeding tool of choice. It has a nice sharp point on it so that I can easily uh, pick uh, an edge and pick that up and then pull and then have a blade on there uh, so that if I do need to cut the vinyl as I'm going along, I can easily do so. And so you can see I just uh, used the tip of my knife to get a, a part started and I'm able to just peel up the rest of my hand. Um, and then for these small pieces there, you can see I'm just using a tip to kind of lift up an edge. Uh, kind of twist my knife and then it picks it up and you'll see what I do here. I pick it up, twist, and then uh, start pulling the vinyl. Then because I have a knife, I can just cut off that exit or that part right there and then break that into essentially two pieces uh, so that I'm not trying to peel um, basically the whole sheet at one time. And I can go, since this is a circular shape, I can just go around and more safely peel uh, the HTV excess and weed it out uh, without ruining or risking um, pulling out stuff that uh, I don't want to pull out because simply I'm pulling too much at one time. So again, just going all the way around, I got I used the tip of my knife to get this started, take out the main uh, excess vinyl, and then use the tip of my knife to basically pick and pull up each of the smaller bits in between each of the letters, as you can see that I'm doing here. Again, having an X-Acto knife, uh, a fresh blade, and uh, actually with a nice sharp point, I found to be the best, at least for me, and doing that now i finished weeding it out just turn it, flipping it over to make sure everything's weeded out like i want it to looks good so the next is the uh, preparation of the canvas and frame basically you'll want to separate the uh, canvas from the frame and so when you buy these you'll see there's a bunch of staples all the way around the back side and you can see i'm just using a flathead screwdriver uh, to essentially kind of dig under there a little bit and twist it up so that the staples kind of form like a, an arch. And then you can see I have a pair of pliers to my right, and then I'm just going to use the pliers there. Now, this is the back side of the frame or the part of the frame that's not going to be um, uh, utilized or, or seen. Uh, and so if you damage the frame a little bit when you twist this, because it is soft pine, when you twist the screwdriver, the edge of it kind of tends to make a little divot underneath the staple. Um, it's not going to be seen because it's going to be the backside of the verse canvas frame. So once I've got all those staples pulled up into an arch, just use my set of pliers to pull them up. Just as you see, I'm doing there. Uh, be careful uh, with these. You don't want to poke yourself with these staples. They can be sharp, pointed at the ends. Um, have a trash can nearby so you can just dump it straight into the trash. And you don't have a bunch of staples laying around. It might fall on the floor. You might step on them. Uh, whatever. Um, if you didn't uh, pull up the staple enough uh, to easily pull up the plier, you may want to um, push it up a little bit more. You can also use needle nose pliers, which the tip of the nose can kind of get underneath that arch and you can basically use the frame as a lever uh, or as a leverage point uh, to kind of lift it up that way as well if you uh, are unable to pull it out straight up as I'm doing here. Um, and so once I have finished that, Basically, what we'll end up doing after that, the canvas will be loose and free from the frame. And then we'll just basically take it out, uh, take it off of the frame, as you'll see here in just a second. The corners are folded over and they kind of tend to stick a little bit. Um, so you just have, might have to kind of peel them out a little. And so you can see now the frame is free from the canvas. All right, so as far as staining, all I did was take, you can see my stain on the left and the urethane on the right that's the back side of the frame so the front side and the inside of the frames i just used a foam a cheap foam brush applied the stain um, i used minwax uh, wood finish here i think it's like a dark walnut color bought it from menards for like eight or nine dollars and then i sealed it after it had dried overnight with some clear acrylic again it's eight or nine dollars that i can bought from menards uh, really quick really simple and easy to do once uh, you have your frame prepped um, you can go ahead and what I'm doing here is just placing it about in the center. You have plenty of excess as you can see and I'm going to place a frame and all I'm doing is just making sure that I have it that this will fit properly and I have enough excess to be able to do this properly. And then because the carrier sheet on the Sizer Easy Weed and many HTVs is kind of sticky, I just apply it down a little bit 
because uh, that'll make it a little bit easier when I move it over to my heat press to, to apply it. Now here's my heat press. I have it set for 320 degrees. Um, resetting the camera here. Um, 320 degrees and I press it for I believe 25 seconds. If you don't have a heat press, a home iron will work well. Just make sure you put the canvas on a surface that could take heat and that you apply pressure uh, evenly all over the entire uh, graphic so that it is applied um, again evenly uh, and that it'll peel up nicely. So I'm applying the graphic now with my heat press. I believe again 20 25 seconds at 320 degrees. Um, pop it up when my timer goes off and then sizer is a hot peel so you'll see me just peel it real quickly here. Be careful if you're using a heat press that clamshell you don't want to put your arm on that because that's uh, pretty darn hot and you can burn yourself really easily. So you can see that peeled off nice and easily and the vinyl is now applied to the graphic. Uh, let's pull it up here and kind of give you a closer view. All right, so now that the graphic has been applied, you'll want to uh, get ready to apply it to the canvas. And so you can see that I just took the frame and I'm kind of centering it. You can, I'm eyeball centering it. You can measure from different points. You can see I'm pointing uh, in different areas and you can just make sure that from the highest points or, or from each side, uh, measure this, the distance there if you wanted to, to make sure that it's centered within it. Um, once you do that, you'll have to flip it over. Be careful. I like the pinch. You see my thumbs are holding the frame really tightly uh, and the canvas against the frame really tightly so that it doesn't move. Uh, be careful here because you don't want it to move. And then what I'll do then is take my stapler. I'm just using a regular old household stapler. The, the wood is soft enough to be able to puncture in and just give it a good whack. Boom. And then another one. Boom. I like these staples because they're they not only hold the canvas on really well, they're actually very easily to move, remove. And so what I'm doing now that I've anchored it is I'm flipping it over to make sure that it didn't move on me and that it's basically centered still and is going to be the way that I want it to look. If that's the case, go ahead, flip it back over. And what I'm going to do is add a couple more staples, a few more staples in here. I tend to do about five or six per side. Uh, and again, just household stapler. The wood is so soft because uh, it is pine that this, this stapler does. I found that household staplers, um, office staplers, uh, if you just give it a good whack, uh, they'll go straight into the um, into the soft wood. And again, if you do mess up, like I did here, just take uh, some sort of flat tool, pull the staple up. Uh, it comes off really easily, and then redo it. Super easy, and staples are cheap. Um, and stapler is something that you probably have on hand. So there it is. Now it's been fully applied. Time to trim off the excess. And what I do here is... Basically, I trim off above the staple, but below the bottom edge of the frame. If I were to do this again, I'd probably leave a little more excess uh, towards the top edges of the frame there so that if I ever did need to take this off, I have a little bit of um, extra uh, canvas that I can reapply this to. So cut off the excess on all four sides, as you can see that I'm doing here. And once I've cut off all the excess canvas, this project is complete. So you can see, just flipping this over, that um, this is a really cool, easy to do project. The only thing that you may want to consider doing if you wanted to hang this up is add some sort of hanger to the back top uh, of the frame on the back side there. Otherwise, you can use one of those uh, mantle mounts for this, but this project is done. Now that the walkthrough tutorial on making this project is finished, let's talk a little bit about how much this project might cost you to do. For the canvas cost, I had bought this at a hobby store uh, like Hobby Lobby, or you can get it at any other local hobby store like Michael's in your area. Uh, I had bought these on sale, three pack I believe was $10, so there was about $3.33 uh, each. I'm not sure what the regular price is for this, but it's going to be more, I can imagine, about $15 to $20 for a three pack. So each individual uh, canvas with its frame is going to be about $3.33 before you add in things like taxes. The cost of the heat transfer vinyl uh, can vary depending on which brand that you use and how much you buy. Uh, in this particular project, I use Sizer's Easy Weed Vinyl in Black. Uh, you can get on Amazon, and I'll put links in the description below, a 1 foot or 11.8 inches by 5 foot roll for approximately uh, $17. If I did my math right, that's about five square feet. So per square foot, it's about $3.40. Uh, 
for this project because I had a nine by nine image or slightly smaller, I just ended up cutting out about a square foot. It was actually a little bit less, but we're, we'll make it uh, easy and just say a square foot, which if I did my math right, that turns out to be about $3.40 worth of vinyl that I would use off of a one foot by five foot roll. So the total cost so far for this project is about $7. Uh, give or take uh, before taxes and the things and things like that. So there may be some other costs associated with the project such as the uh, clear coat and the stain that you might elect to use, um, the brushes and supplies that you use to apply the stain, things like that. Uh, however, that's to me not really a cost that you can quantify easily at least to this particular project because I really don't know how much stain I used to stain the frame. I don't know how much clear coat I used to clear coat after that, I know that I barely used any in each can. So I'm gonna imagine each can is about $9 uh, that I use maybe pennies on the dollars worth of stain and uh, clear coat to do that. Also, I'm not counting the cost of my heat press because that's kind of something that I already have on hand. If you don't have a heat press, you're a, um, a home iron works just as well as long as you apply even pressure all the way across. Uh, things like your brushes that you apply to stain and clear coat to. Those are also kind of um, costs that just, you can either count them or not. I mean, each brush, you can buy a 10 pack of foam brushes for I think like two or $3, maybe $5. So each brush is less than a dollar a piece. So overall, this project, if you're counting the, the canvas with the frame and then the heat transfer vinyl, really it's about $7 or more, uh, give or take, depending on the taxes in your area. And if you can buy the canvas on sale or even the vinyl, if you can get it on sale, it may cost you more or less. But for about $7, you can make a really cool, very unique, uh, gift for yourself or for others, or you know, you might be able to sell these um, as a, you know as for a, a client or a customer that wants something uh, kind of unique for their house. All right, guys. So I hope you like the project. Um, I hope this video was entertaining and informative and instructive uh, and helped you out. Maybe gave you some ideas on making a reverse canvas. Uh, maybe the confidence to make one if you've been wanting to make one but haven't um, been too afraid to try or just didn't know where to start. If you like this video, guys, give it some love by hitting that thumbs up button below. And please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit the bell notification button so you get notices whenever I post new content to the channel. I've got more projects and videos on the way that I'd love to share with you guys. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.